good morning, everyone. How are you? Um, it's going to be hot here in Livermore today. I think like 108. And it's 10 in the morning and the house is already shut up tight. <laughs> uh, the good news is, is about a year ago we got solar and uh, we can have air on. I mean, we could have it on before, but like keep it at 78. Now we can keep it like at 74, 75. So I'm very, very happy about that. And I'm running all our electrical things like laundry and all that crack of dawn this morning. So um, here we are. I am going to talk about the, the quilt behind me when we get through today's block and my boo-boos. I made boo-boos on it, all right? And so I had to recut stuff, which led to waste, blah, blah, blah. But again, it was a mystery to me. I'm working without a pattern and there you go. So also I got a query from somebody. Oh, John is not here, but I think it's gonna work. One thing's a little wacky, but I've got a work around on it. John had to go out to work to get uh, measurements of Ricky's new books because they're in the warehouse and we would love to ship you them. So the information's in the store. But somebody was saying they were having a hard time uh, getting into the forum. And I had a difficult time trying to snap images of the screen. But let me talk you through this, you guys, because I'm telling you, it's where it's happening. So what you do is you go to the um, main page and you get there by clicking the quilt show. And I realize the logo here is on top of it, so that's no good. Eesh, but right up in here, okay? You go there and then what'll happen is you're gonna come over here to connect. And you hit connect and then there's a drop down and that's what I couldn't show you. Um, there's a drop down and in there it is forum. So once you get to the forum, there's a lot of words. I hate to read, you guys know that, dyslexic. Go to recent topics and where you're gonna find that is, you see the Quilt Show logo up here on the upper left hand side that has my name under it. So if somebody stumbles on this, they know where they're at. Well, right under it in blue, it says recent topics. That's where you wanna go. And then you can see there, that's the Cave Mystery Quilt with Alex. And I mean, my gosh, we're already on page today, 65. I just did that this morning. I mean, there's so much information there. And um, one of the things that I super greatly appreciate is that, oh, I hear John's here. Uh, they, you guys are putting things up there and you're asking questions. It's just as if we're in a classroom and we're all responding to each other. So I just really, really love it. Okay, so I just kind of went through and just went through and started just grabbing the first three pages to see what we get here. So <clears throat> this is F Jelly P and it, this is, I think, very, very interesting. And she has the sashing in there. I'm gonna tell you right now, you guys, I'm not one for sashing unless it's a design element. And I would say this is a design element. And I like that you're keeping it a little bit thinner. So fun, fun, fun. And you know, the other thing is if you run out of fabric, that's when you're just gonna have to make do with what you've got and figure it out. That's part of the whole thing. Okay, this is C. Alexander, and I gotta tell you, I had serious fabric envy when this image came up. I, I just couldn't believe it, and I got my brain going in another direction. I mean, what if, and I'm, I'm just putting out what ifs, you know, what if somebody did like some cave blocks and then drop down stripes and stuff like that or integrate stripes into the whole thing? Uh, the other thing is note that and I'm assuming it's she's, you guys, and I'm really sorry about that. But but notice in the strips of fabric, she's also put uh, some prints in it. Not a lot, but boy, they look good. Okay, and then this is Hap, Hap Happy to Sew. I love your name, Happy to Sew. Uh, she said people look at her blocks and kind of go, okay, you got some wild stuff going on here, and that makes my heart go pitter-patter. What I want to say to you is if you choose to put, it looks like you're just laying your blocks out on hunks of fabric, and that's great. 
I would be inclined though to do want these on point, especially if you are gonna put in sashing. And this is the case of be, be really aware of the width of your sashing. And the only way I know is when I put it on the design wall, yay, which you've got going on here, you, then you can, um, you know, iron fabric, fold fabric, whatever, to see what looks really good. Uh, this is a true scrap quilt. And for me, the part that holds it together are the whites. So good job, Ms. Ray. Okay, uh, I stumbled on this one this morning and uh, her question was, and this is a female because it's Mrs. Ray. <laughs> I wonder if you were a school teacher, uh, asked, should she keep those squares floating, those black squares or trim down to? In my book, float them because something really, ex, uh, it, something really is happening there. They're popping out. I think it's much more interesting than if those black squares went all the way to the edge. Okay, Carrie, you just asked what is on point. This is a perfect block. Uh, thing to look at. The blocks on the right hand side, if we're just looking at the blocks, not the quarter square triangles around the outside edge, those are on point. And mine is being set on point. If you go to the left and look just at the blocks, they're not on point. Now the fact that she has put uh, quarter square triangles around it makes the big block on point but um, point means to the right hand side. Excellent question. This is Diane's. Do you remember you guys? Do you remember that she worked this out on uh, the computer program? And you said something really important in your description of this because here is the finished quilt, okay? I think you worked out in the EQ. I was going, what is it? It's electric quilt. Okay. She said, it was done. It told me it was done. And I will tell you right now, quilts have personalities just like children. You have them and you think it's going to be this way or that way. Well, guess what? They have minds of their own. And when it says it's done, it's done. I'm still having a discussion with mine and we'll talk about that in a moment on when it's going to be done. I yeah so the other um the other day i was talking to my girlfriend lois and i was just going to give you a bunch of blocks for homework this weekend but i forgot there was a block i wanted to sneak in and she said that she woke up at four in the morning and was just like her brain was spinning i mean spinning on what to do and she asked about uh, EQ and uh, electric quilt, yeah, EQ and stuff like that. And then I remembered that uh, night vision is the block I wanted to show you guys for a couple of reasons. And so I thought that was appropriate. Where did my little, oh, here, it's right here. I thought that was appropriate given that she was having night visions. You know you're a quilter when, yeah. Oh, by the way, speaking of not sleeping, we got a new bed yesterday and actually we got some furniture. It's my COVID gift to myself. And my old dresser is out at Alden Lane and they're gonna use it for a prop. I loved that dresser and I couldn't stand just giving it away, even selling it. But if it's out at Alden Lane, I can go visit it. So I'm very happy about it. But we got this this new bed and some a little new furniture. And last night I'm like, I didn't sleep because I kept waking up going, do I like this? Do I not like this? I mean, our old bed, you guys can relate to this, was held up by bricks. And in the middle, it was like, Weep. so you're always like on your side grabbing for the action. <laughs> now, the really cool thing is I got it at um, European Bedworks, I think in Berkeley, and it's made in Richmond. And if you've got 100 days to not return it, but to fix it. So I'm going to give it a week or so and just kind of relax into it. And then the other thing was it's a deeper bed. And so, man, getting those sheets on, I felt like an alligator rustler. I it was, I, I need Arnold Schwarzenegger here with his muscles to help us make the bed. Okay, so night vision is on page, is number 61, and it is page 73. And what my, night vision gives you is it gives you partial seams. 
all right? So let's take a look before I talk about, I'm gonna once again go through the flying geese, but it has to be the old fashioned way. And the reason it has to be the old fashioned way is because here's the flying geese. Well, one side is pink and then the other side is white. So the way I showed you Wednesday, I'm sure it can work, but I don't know how. I mean, the way I did the flying geese before was simply by just using having your flying geese and then having the two background colors be the same. But in this case, they're not the same. So we have to get rid of that. And we need to go down to here. I have figured out how to do split screen. All right. Okay, go away. Let's go here to iPhone. For some reason, um, this has gotten really small and John wasn't here to fix it and I don't want him in here right now trying to fix it. So here is, John, just take notes if people have questions. Okay, so here is your quarter square triangle and on Wednesday, I said, don't cut, don't cut. Remember, this time I have to cut because one side is gonna be one color and another side's gonna be the other color. Um, I am just demoing it with two sides or with colors that are the same. So when you're doing it this way, we're into the thing of when weirdo shapes don't line up, okay? And I believe this was cut at four and a quarter. Let me look, I can do more than I believe. No, this was cut at five and a quarter and then corner to corner. And then this was cut at two and seven eighths. And the weirdo shape, you're gonna have the corner be exactly right. And then the weirdo shape is gonna be up here. And I have gotten addicted to using the glue. Absolutely addicted. It just feeds in so much nicer get over there okay now there I want this side to be pink and I want this side to be white and I'll show you a boo-boo in a little bit so I'm gonna go sew this and I will tell you right now in in making them this way it's a little bit slower than how I showed you the other day and it's a little more laborious but that's how you're gonna get the colors two different sizes Right, so here we go. So now it's time to press. And when I go to press, I'm going to press from the top and I'm gonna to be very aware that this, my friends, I'm gonna see if I can get this justified a little bit different. There. This, guys, is, um, is bias, is exposed bias. Okay, if you post your pictures, Carmen, on Facebook, Alex Page, do I see them? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Now I'm gonna come up. See that? I'm not, my, my iron is never, ever, ever touching that. And at this point, I do not have steam in my iron. Also, this is an extremely firm ironing surface. All right, extremely firm. So now I've got another weirdo shape that doesn't line up. So it's going to be down here. And the weirdoness is up here. I'm going to drop in glue. Remember, this glue dries really fast. It's water soluble. And it just sticks stuff together. It's the uh, fabric glue stick by Quilter Select. It's a clone of Charisma that's made in Japan. Okay, let me go sew this again. My poor little machine, not little, this thing's a monster, fabulous machine. It needs to go in and get a, a body check, you know, her, her annual, and I just can't even hardly stand to let her go. Okay, there we go. Okay, now I'm going to press again. The good news is, is that because it's all on the straight of grain on the outside edge, you can now press your brains out. All right, there we go. And this turned out perfectly. I want this edge to float a quarter inch from here. And because it's perfect, 
I will now trim off the bunny ears. I never trim off the bunny ears until I know it's right. Because if I trim off the bunny ears and I want to go back and measure, I mean, chances are if it, it's not right, I've cut something wrong. I can't go back and measure if those little bunny ears are gone. So let's take a look at the block again. Um, I'm going to go to here. Yeah, and, and in this case, I, I was lazy, and I you're going to want one side one color and one side the other color. I was, I was being a lazy bubby. Sorry. In fact, I just had the brilliance to do it right now. So here's the block, okay? What you have going on here is you've got what they call partial seams. So let's take a look at this. Oh, let's take a look at this first. This was not lined up properly, the bottom one. And you can see when I'm looking at the at the purple side, the white is tipping up. Guys, that's really unacceptable. And you really wanna make sure, like I just showed you before, if you're looking at the purple side, you wanna see purple. If you're looking at the white side, you wanna see white. I learned that from Sally Collins, who is an excellent teacher. Why is, can it go back? I want it on me. There we go. Okay. Let's see if this works better than um, doing demo. I think it might, okay? So, whoops, let's get rid of that one. Let's go to the next one. So here it is. You can see there's, unlike a nine patch, there's seams that do not run all the way across in one direction. So again, this is called a partial seam block. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew the square on. And you guys, if you aren't following this, just please go back and watch it again. Just watch it again. And you can see I've marked it with my uh, disappearing ink pen exactly where I'm going to sew. I am, I, I'm only sewing a partial seam. So there you go. All right, from the center there down to the edge. I don't even think you need to backstitch. I don't think it's that important. All right, then what you do is you press that and so now on the bottom right hand corner, we're gonna sew that seam on all the way across. All right, using your quarter inch. Um, is the one of the wings supposed to be two colors? Yes, like this is how you want it to look, you guys. All right, I would, that was not naughty of me. So now I'm gonna sew on the bottom quad, quadrant, right? Then I'm gonna sew, you can see there I've sewn it on. Now I'm going to sew on the left hand bottom. This is really a really sweet block. Okay. And then I'm going to sew on the upper left. And you can see that that wing there is hanging there. Okay. So see, then that's the last seam that you're going to take. You've partially sewn it. And now you're going to go back and finish it up. And that's how you do a partial seam. And there's the block. Perfect. I love this block. It's so much fun. And I and I love that uh, Lois said I couldn't sleep. And I thought, yeah, man, we we've, we've got we've got to do night vision. And actually, I had it in my original plans, and I forgot. And above my head, right there, is night vision. It looks kind of weird to tell you the truth, but I'm gonna keep it in. Uh, all right. So again, it's block number 61. Remember they're in alphabetical order. And then also um, it's on page 73. So yes, each little wing is supposed to be a different color. I screwed up by not doing that here, sorry. So I guess you get what you pay for. So, okay, before I talk about the design on the wall and how I screwed up, you got questions there? Very general. Some general questions here. I did it. On point, we covered. Are we going to how to quilt this? <laughs> yeah, it's called write a check. <laughs> no, I don't know what I'm going to do about quilting this. I'm still working about the body of the quilt. And then what am I going to do on the border? So... Shouldn't the block, uh, Terry, shouldn't the block B come to the top? I don't know. I don't know what you're asking. I'm sorry. The one you look like kind of looks like a flashlight and a beam. I know. I know. It's weird. It's a weird block. 
but it's going in. And by the way, I have some other blocks we haven't covered yet, but the very last block I'm going to do is going to be the signature block. And you could see, well, right up here, right up here, I'm leaving a hole for that. And I might decide to say something about COVID on it. I don't know, but I don't know. But there are some other blocks we haven't done yet. And anyways, okay, so let's talk about what I did wrong. When I started this quilt, I knew I wanted to work with this book, the Quick and Easy Block Tool, and we're gonna be by C&T, we sell them in the store, and we will be working on this with the basket quilts too, okay? Um, I knew I wanted to work with this, I knew I wanted to work with CAFE, and I knew I wanted white in it. Those were the boundaries that I gave myself. And when I start a quilt, that's how I work. And then I also thought, I want to I want to put it on point, okay, because I wanted to do something fun in here for in between. Also, if you're new to quilting, if you put it on point, it makes the quilt bigger real fast. Tip. So um, I cut these out as quarter square triangles, right? Because I wanted the outside edge to finish on the straight of grain. If this finishes six inches, this edge here of this block, and I want this to finish six inches, the magic number is one and a quarter. So I added one and a quarter to the squares, cut them like this, and then this is on straight of grain, this is on straight of grain. And how I was gonna piece it was this, is I was gonna piece it coming down this way, just like this. That's how, that's how, you, that's how you piece on, on point. It's how I showed you, where did you go, little guy? Um, where are you? Oh, that's crazy. There was something we did the other day that was that was on point. Let me look in here. Oh, down here. Okay. This guy was done on point too. It was it was not stitched like this and like this. It was stitched diagonally. Okay. So I start making these. Yay. And I'm cutting them all at seven and a quarter. Again, finish at six. Boom, boom. And I start putting them up here. Alrighty. Then and that's fine. That's fine. And then I saw one of yours that had the color wash and someone asked about that. And that's kind of when you work from one color down to another. And then all of a sudden I showed you the stars. I've come up with stars in here, big gigano stars. Uh, this one might be a little bit easier to see. Yeah. Okay. So that's super cool. And then I come, so yay, it's all coming together. I'm really digging this quilt. Then I come to the outside edge here and I start putting up these quarter square triangles, okay? So what happens if I put up a, square, a quarter square triangle in a position like this, okay? This is on the straight of grain, yay, it's meeting to here, but this is on the bias. And this is gonna stretch, oh wait, no, that's a good one. Let me find a bad one, here we go. Look at that. Let's stretch this one. Okay. So then I thought, then I thought, okay, so now this will put this all on the bias out here if I used quarter squares. And I thought, what if I go stitch, 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 and stay stitch? Okay, that will keep it from stretching. It stretched it. Even the stay stitching kind of warped them. And then I thought, get over it. It'll be fine. And then I thought a good leader wouldn't say that. So what I did was I went back and I made these half square triangles, all right? So this is a half square triangle out here. The cutting number is five and an eighth. Uh, yeah, I wanna check that. I drafted it out on my drafting paper and I did the math work for you guys and it's five and an eighth if you want to do the outside edge like that. But wait, there's more. I could have used half square triangles throughout this whole quilt because I could have done it in rows. I could have sewn the half square triangle, oh, let me come down, yeah, the half square triangles right onto this and then make this one big giant block. I could have done that. 
and then I wouldn't have wasted all these edge things. So the way I'm into it now is I'm doing quarter square triangles and then I'm doing half square triangles. A consideration if you want to do this is do all half square triangles and work across, okay? So that was my big mistake. Um, and that's okay, you know, I mean, it's only fabric. I know where I can get leftovers. I, know, I don't want to say that to you, but I know where I can do that. Now, the last thing that I want to speak about are borders. And you can see here, over here, I've put some half square triangles up as borders. Originally, I thought about doing flying geese and seeing how that would work. And I, I, I don't know. Well, actually, this might be kind of fun just to do right now. I thought about doing like this, like this, and putting white in there. How does that look? I think it's too chunky. I think it's, I think it's too big. Let's put up a couple more. This is how I work, you guys, just like this. Put it up here. And I would have to cut new ones too because this would all be on the bias, again, on the outside edge. Gosh, I don't know. I'll take votes on this. I'm serious. I will, I will too. What are you guys saying? What do you think? I think it's too big, those chunks. What do you think? Start it. Talk to me. I think it's too big. Okay, Terry says it's think it's too big. Uh, can't see very well because the logo, two big flying geese. I wonder if I can move the logo. No, I can't. Um, it's too big. That's just like the one little block I threw out because it was too small. Okay, so maybe I will do um, half square triangles and that'll be real easy because then I just cut those at the, you know, five and an eighth and just have at it. Okay, three inches. That would be too small, I think. Okay, good, yay, I got the votes. So this weekend, I want you to start thinking about your set. We are gonna make some more blocks next week. And I think I might call for a week off where we can just sew our brains off. You know, maybe I come answer questions or something like that. Uh, please do go to the forum, I'm trying to, okay, good, yay, they're too big. Okay, get out of here, right here. Let's go back to this. <laughs> Here we go. Oh yeah, I wanted to say one other thing. There. I typically, oh yeah, look at that. That looks good. Okay. Um, I typically don't put borders on like solid fabric borders unless it's a real design decision because sometimes I think it just looks like you're trying to make the quilt bigger. What, what's going on? What do you want me to do? Oh, John just fixed it, okay. He said, turn the computer. So I so appreciate you guys. And this is what's going on in the forum is people are saying, oh, try this, try that. Yeah, I really do like that. Um, yeah, so, okay. I And I don't think I'm gonna have to put on an inner border because the math is gonna work out fine because I'm just gonna use the same size uh, half square triangles. So yay for that. I'll do turning the corner trick that I showed you before. I really like this quilt. I really like this quilt. I've been doing a lot of crazy kind of wacky quilts lately and this is somewhere in between the two in my book. So it looks too big, also makes the quilt look busy. Leave out the white on the border pieces. I don't know what you mean, Jacqueline. I think if I, if I do half square triangles, they're just gonna go straight on there like that because yes, this is a busy quilt and I'm gonna own it for that. I, I, I just happen to love them. And I think it tells of my mental state during quarantine. <laughs> I, but I will tell you, as soon as I get this thing sewn together, I will talk to you about quilting it. And um, I also will show you what we're gonna be doing with the basket, uh, the basket quilt. That quilt is gonna be dealing with the baskets in the book. Um, it's gonna be dealing with blocks that are different sizes and mixing it up. So I'm very excited about it very traditional after this, very traditional. So, okay, you guys, uh, have a good weekend. So, night vision, I don't wanna keep you up thinking about this, but night vision, 
And I hope to sew in here today. This room gets really super hot. I mean, really super hot. So, okay, so how about, somebody said, how about a skinny white border? That will throw off the math, okay? Because the math is right, right now. It will throw off the math. So consider your, I think I started to say this earlier, consider your inner borders as places where you can kind of get it together mathematically. I mean, I've even done quilts where the inner border has just been on both sides to adjust the math. So thank you for choosing to spend your time with me. Have a wonderful weekend. And if it's, I'm sorry, man, if you're in the California area, it's hotter than anything. <sighs> So thank you for air conditioning. Have a good one, you guys, and um, tell someone you love them today. Okay, bye-bye.